Okay, so we were in the process of uh, finding a, a new, a different metric space on R2. Uh, so uh, we had just got to this point. Now, what we will do uh, is we will add. Uh, so two. Let's say let's call this equation one, and let's call this equation two, or inequality two. And basically, to equality to inequality one, we're going to add onto both sides y2 minus z2 plus z2 minus x2. I'm just going to do this rigorously because we're going to we're going to. This is pure math, so we should do things rigorously now. So we're going to add onto both sides at y2 minus z2 plus z2 minus x2. So we'll get y1 minus z1 plus z1 minus x1. And onto this side we add plus y2 minus z2 plus z2 minus x2. Now by the ordered field properties of the real numbers, this is the inequality still holds that this is less than or equal to y1 minus z1 plus z1 minus x1, and then we add this thing onto this side as well, plus y2 minus z2 uh, plus z2 minus x2. So basically, the ordered field properties of the real numbers tell us that if you, add, if you have an inequality, a is less than or equal to b, then if you add on c to both sides, I'll just make a note of this, if a is less than or equal to b, then a plus c is less than or equal to b plus c if c is an element of the real numbers. So, and that is for any element of the real numbers. So all I've done here is I've taken inequality 1 and added a real number onto uh, both sides. So the inequality still holds true. Now, I take inequality 2 and I add on, what am I going to add on? Uh, I add on uh, y1 minus z1 plus z1 minus x1. Now you might say, what a kerfuffle, why are you going for all of this? All you needed to do was add, say that, okay, it's obvious that uh, the sum of these two is going to be less than or equal to the sum of these two, but I'm just going to show you rigorously why that is true. Um, so, uh, using the axioms of the ordered field of real numbers. So, uh, if you add on this onto both sides of 2, you get that y2 minus z2 plus z2 minus x2 uh, plus uh, y1 minus z1 plus z1 minus x1 is less than or equal to y2 minus z2 plus z2 minus x2. So I'm just taking this bit from inequality 2 uh, plus y1 minus z1 plus z1 minus x1. So that is still true, exactly the same reason because uh, the ordered field axioms are the real numbers. So I'm just adding a real number onto both sides of inequality 2. And the real number I added was this. Okay, now I apply the transitive property of the order of the ordered field of the real numbers, which is that well, sorry, uh, I apply the transitive property of inequalities uh, of a, of an order of a total ordering. If a is less than or equal to b and b is less than or equal to c, it implies that a is less than or equal to c. What I have here is look, I have that this here, this sum here, is less than or equal to this here. I have this this this. Okay, I'm just going to get my highlight to start again. This term here, underlined in pink, is the same as this term here. So that features as our B. So I have got that um, our A is this bit up here, A, and our C uh, is this bit down here. So basically what I get is that this bit up here is less than or equal to this bit here because it is less than or equal to pink, and pink is less than or equal to uh, red. Okay, uh, so... Uh, if I write all of that out, I get that y1 uh, minus z1 plus z1 minus x1 plus um, y2 minus z2 plus z2 minus x2 is less than or equal to y2 minus z2 plus z2 minus x2 plus y1 minus z1 plus z1 minus x1. Okay, uh, so that's brilliant because these now we can reduce back to what they originally were, which were, is that, um, okay, let me just move this up and straighten everything out a bit. Uh, this, on this side, uh, this um, y1 minus z1 plus z1 minus x1 plus y2 minus z2 plus z2 minus x2. If we just get rid of the z1s and z2s now again, this goes back, this is just equal to uh, dxy, which is what it originally was. Now, so we get that dxy is less than or equal to this. Well, if we just reorder a few things here, if we just reorder, uh, if we swap these two terms around by the commutative properties of addition, uh, y2 minus z2 plus y1 minus z1, 
And in fact, actually, I should have ordered it slightly better. I should have swapped them around even more. Plus uh, Z1 minus X1 plus Z2 minus X2. Uh, this whole thing is greater than or equal to DX, Y, Z. Now, this bit here is equal to the distance between Y and Z. And this bit here is the distance between uh, between X and and, uh, oh wait, how was I defining this? y1 minus x1 uh, was equal to the distance between x and y. So this should probably, it doesn't matter, but it should maybe be written dzy just to be consistent. Obviously dzy is exactly the same thing as dyz, but the way I've written this, we should write it as dzy to be consistent. Uh, because I put the y first, and here I had the y first, and y was second over here. But it's trivial. Uh, yeah, the, now I've got Z first here, so Z should come second in this, so plus DXZ. Okay, uh, so basically what I end up with is that the distance between X and Y is less than or equal to, swap these around, distance between X and Z plus the distance between Z and Y. Okay, so that's why it obeys the triangle inequality. Uh, so basically, what we have seen is that R2, with this other metric, forms a metric space. So that is another way of equipping this same set uh, with a different metric. So it's, it's not like uh, that you have one set and there's only one metric it can possibly take. There are many, many different metrics it can take.